Hello, hello, hello and welcome to Jesse James Beads. How are you doing today? My name is Gem Hawks. I'm broadcasting to you from the United Kingdom where it has been a day of all seasons. It's been chilly and then windy and then rainy and then dark and then sunny. So we've had it all. How has it been where you are in the world? Just give me a quick hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And I've got a real treat, a festival of earrings for you today. I've got a beautiful trio working with the pirate getaway box. Let's just pop you down to the board and show you a handful of the beads that are still as yet unused in my collection. What I like to do on occasion is be totally disorganised and just cut all of the strands and then smash everything together just to make sure that I can see all of the possible colour combinations. So how are you doing? Are you having a beautiful day today? I really do hope so. I'm just going to press the things on Facebook to see if I can get any comments up today. And if you're able to just say a quick hello, I would love to know where you're watching from today and what it is you've been up to. Here we go, let's have a look. Elaine is in from Berwyn. Is that Philadelphia? I'm not au fait with the two letter abbreviations for the states. Jessica is in sending huggles from, and to everyone, from Florida. Debbie is in, hello my darling. Cheryl is in from sunny Dayton in Ohio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you've had a lovely day one and all. It's great to be able to see comments this time. Hi, it's me, it's Pennsylvania. I should have worked that one out, shouldn't I? with a P and an A on it. I couldn't name all the states. I'm terribly sorry. I would give it a go, but I'm sure I would get it wrong anyway. Welcome from Pennsylvania. To myself in the United Kingdom, I'm broadcasting from Oxfordshire, not far from Shakespeare's Stratford-upon-Avon, which is where I originally hail from. For today's beautiful earrings, we are going to be working with the February MMB, a, B, a Magical Mystery Bead Box, which I always find really tricky to say. And we're going to be working with a handful of gorgeously colourful, beautiful, inspirational pieces. Now the techniques that I want to share with you today are completely transferable. You don't have to use the specific beads or charms that I'm working with in the February Pirate Treasure Bead Box. Pirate Getaway it's called, but I keep thinking of it as Pirate Treasure because everything is like jewel coloured. The beautiful Monstera leaves are just utterly ridiculously stunning. So I'm excited to share some techniques with you. Let's have a quick look at those beads whilst I welcome a few more people. So I've got Wanda is in Maryland, Sharon is in from a cold buffalo in New York, Anne is in from rainy California and Sharon is in from Oregon. Welcome to you all. If I've not called you out, it's not because I'm ignoring you, it's because I can see four comments at a time and that's my lot. So these are a beautiful collection of beads that I still have to work with from the Pirate Getaway bead box, which was February's bead box. If you are a subscriber, congratulations. What an absolutely fabulous collection. Roseanne is in from Ohio also. Welcome to you, my darling. If you have not yet tried a subscription to the bead box, you can get past boxes individually. I'm just going to show you a handful of different beads that I have in this lovely collection. Some that really inspire me every single time are these metallic spacers. These are a gorgeous deep dark teal colour with a very, very inky colourway of those beautiful rhinestones encrusted onto them. Another bead that I particularly enjoy working with, I'm not working with them today, are these ceramic large hole beads. This is a beautiful glossy black ceramic with an absolutely vast centre in the middle there. Jessica says she can't wait for beads and blooms. Neither can I. Do you want to see a little quick sneaky peek? Sneaky peek. That's all I'm going to show you. You'll have to look closer later. A little bit of a sneaky peek on one of the projects. Well, it's half of the project, actually. These are fabulous. Whether I can pick it up with the uh, little tweezers is very unlikely. Super shiny drop with that central drill hole up at the top there. Those are gorgeous. I think probably one of my favourites from this particular collection are these gorgeous clay beads. So clever. Really, really beautiful. 
Jessica's joining us for Beads and Blooms. There are a handful of places still available if you fancy joining us there. These are really cool. It's a bead on a pin in a, a square spacer. Now, if you really wanted to, you could disassemble them, but I love them as they are. These are also really, really cool and useful. These little golden toned, like washer beads spacers, they're very, very cool. I'm a particular fan of the parrots. I think it's wood underneath. They're also adorable, as are the gorgeous florals. Now these can be used as connectors. You've got two drill apertures on either side of the flower there, as well as these gorgeously painted shell beads. Now what you get when you paint over a, a mop or a mother of pearl or a shell is you get a lovely iridescence underneath those colorways that you don't get on a flat background. We've got sparkle, we've got metallics. These are really lovely as well. These are, I imagine, glass. I don't know the ins and outs of how the glass is produced, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Rebecca is on board for Beads and Blooms too. Welcome. It's lovely and I'm looking forward to sharing makes with you. You've got these absolutely fantastic fluted bead caps. We're going to be using one of those in a moment. Would you like to have a look at the project? If you've never tried an MMBB, there are usually a handful of boxes available. It might not be the specific month that has just passed. In this instance, there are a handful of February boxes and I've popped a link in the video description. But those are just a handful a small selection of what I got to work with with that February bead box and that was Pirate Getaway. Here are our projects for today. So I'm going to be making three earrings with you, three different techniques, three different styles, three different sizes really. Where do you fancy starting? Do you want to start with the parrot drops sitting on their own little gorgeous golden stand? Do you want to go for these? I think they're ceramic. They're really beautiful colourways. It's almost like alcohol ink colourways when you pour that onto water with dish soap and it gives you that beautiful bubbly effect. They're absolutely stunning. I've got to admit a particular fondness for the uh, for flora and fauna. I can say words, not today though. These also could work as a connector because you do have that drill aperture down at the bottom as well. Parrots first, says Jessica. That is indeed where we shall go then. So I'm just going to pop these other earrings up to the top for a moment. We shall have a complete trio of earrings today. Let's just pop the bottoms of those up there and then we'll pop the bottoms of those just next to them, just out of the way. And I made an asymmetric colourway, but you can match if you desire. So I've saved the little lighter coloured parrot to work with for today. In addition to the parrot himself or herself, we're going to be using one of the bead caps. And I chose to use this one. It looks a little bit fluted. And I thought in my imagination, it looked like a very fancy parrot stand. Very fancy. And we will also be using some 18 gauge wire. Now I'm working with a copper colourway. This is craft wire from Softflex, non-tarnished copper, 18 gauge round. You can also work with the German style wire in an 18 gauge round, absolutely no problem at all. Now I have a scrap length here, it's about five inches and that's far more than we will need, but it's where we're going to start today. Now, if you put a head pin through your parrot, what you may not have seen if you've not actually received this box yet, is that the drill hole runs at a jaunty angle, like so. So if I just hold that over the top, if you hang that on a head pin, the head pin might not sit exactly how you want it to. So the idea of using the golden bead cap as a little bit of a parrot stand, that's not a word I thought I'd say this morning, uh, it just helps it to sit really beautifully when it is in wear and it swings nicely. You don't have to have quite as much chain as I've gone for. I went for six little happy skulls. You could go for as many or as few as you wanted to. Now if you're new to wire work, a way to enhance your overall experience is just to warm that wire first. Just warm the first couple of inches through, that's all we'll be working with today. And what I'm going to do is to create a stopper for my wire. So I'm going to grab my Beadalon round nose pliers and it's cute says Jessica, they are, they're adorable. <laughs> I'm going to make a small loop, so I'm coming just a short distance from the end of the pliers and I'm going to create a circular form 
just down at the base of the wire or at the end of the wire there and I'm going to grab a hold inside that circular form and push the wire away. It doesn't matter if that end isn't completely closed up because it's not going to be used in a way that you would normally use a loop. However, if your sense of neatness implies that you need to close that up, once it's closed up you can just give that a bit of a squish. Rebecca says, it's very jaunty. I imagine that was in a fairly English accent that you heard that. <laughs> it's very jaunty. So I've squished the little loop on the end there and what that will do is sit inside the bead cap. So I'm going to drop the bead cap down now just so that it sits over the base and that by itself is actually quite a nice technique. You get a lot of movement and for me it's important in both charms on charm bracelets, extender chain drops and in earrings to have a little bit of movement. Sometimes it's nice to have everything stayed and in place but I like to have a little bit of movement. So what we're going to do is add the parrot onto that wire and allow that to go all the way through. Now, I didn't have any problems whatsoever threading on the, wire, uh, on the bead through the wire, but I've got a bit of a kink in this because it is scrap wire. I'm very thrifty with my wire. So if you just make a, a, take a second to straighten that wire, it will sit perfectly through. So you can see already that he's going to be sat upon his beautiful golden perch, or a parrot stand if you prefer, and we're just going to make a simple loop up at the top. Now there's a couple of ways you can make a simple loop. You can either estimate how much wire you will need, trim the length, and then bend the wire around on your round nose pliers. The other option that you can do is to create a right angle bend just above where the wire passes through the shoulder of the parrot. It doesn't need to be terribly close, but reasonably close. Take a right angle bend, and then you can bend the wire over to one side. It's just sitting easily at the moment. And then you can wrap the wire around the pliers. What you will find is that one of those techniques is going to work better for you. So you can either trim a little bit and then create a circular form, or you can create that angle Bend the wire around like so, you will need to just lift that over the top until you get a circular form. Now you'll see that that's offered a slightly more jaunty angle. Jaunty is going to be the word of the day. And we're going to trim the tail of wire away. And we used barely an inch and a half perhaps, so you could use scraps of wire even shorter than mine if you prefer. And then what we're going to do is just make sure that the loop is completely closed up. You may need to just play with that angle slightly like so and get that nice and flat so the next thing we're going to need to do is to trim our little happy skull wire so I have got a length of skull wire ready to go but what I wanted to show you uh, was how you can trim that wire uh, sorry the chain if you need to late here I love those birds, aren't they beautiful? And I love that they're wooden as well. They've got a really beautiful tropical feel to them. It takes me back to Caribbean island adventures. So let's say I wanted to have another six skull long piece of chain. These are quite long, but you can change that distance to make you happy. Now what you'll see is on one side of the chain, that loop is set firmly and on the other side it's loose. So what we're going to do is free off the loose side by clipping the tiny, tiny loop. I'm going to bring it up to the camera slightly. There's a tiny loop in between the skulls. If you turn it sideways you can see there's a rounder form, yeah? So it's connected on one side and it's mobile on the other side. So what we're going to do is free off the mobile side first by clipping that loop. We're not touching the skulls. We've just clipped the loop away and that leaves you with a connected loop on the other side. So what we need to do is trim that with the flush side of your cutters and then just make sure that there's no jagged sticky outy bits. That's actually trimmed perfectly. You may, if you desire, take a four step nail file just to get any rough ends. But what I tend to do is just look really closely and just nibble away not with my teeth you understand with those cutters to get a nice smooth end and that's how you can trim down the chain without worrying about leaving any jagged edges so there's a six skull long piece of chain and all we will need to do is open up 
one side of that loop and you can orient it so that it doesn't turn on the parrot. Just open that up as if it was a jump ring and then we're going to pop that onto the chain and you'll find that the 18 gauge goes through the hole in the side of the skull chain really easily. Now sometimes you'll find certain chains aren't set up for 18 gauge wire in which case you will need to use a lighter wire but the skull chain fortunately for us absolutely is. Now I don't have any spare ear wires here so I'm just going to show you my technique which is with these just bent head pin designs you take it with the skull chain along the pin side of the ear wire. So going to put it where it would go through the ear piercing into the end of that skull wire. Just get that slightly brighter in the centre there and to chase that one all the way round until it sits down in the space. You can open that up a little bit more if you need to but it's easier than trying to get it over the ball on the end of your head pin and then I'm just going to crimp that up by finger. Now if you use tools to do this you can put slightly more pressure on than you may need. So I tend to just close that up by hand. You don't have to use um, a head pin style ear wire, you can use your ear finding of choice obviously. So if you wanted to, you could go for the same colour twice. There is that second parrot, let me grab him over. So you could have a pair of greens and a pair of whites. Or you could join up with a friend and have a pair of odd parrot earrings each. So that is your first earring in today's trio of earring designs. Where do we want to go next? The Monstera plant or onto the coils, pointy, I don't know how to describe them. I'm sure there is an expression for these. I make these very, very large and use them as bookmarks. So it's a lovely technique to learn. Good day, my lovely, says Astrid. Good day to you. And whereabouts are you calling in from or watching in from today? Welcome to the live. The plant first. So it's Monstera first, courtesy of Anne. So let's bring those down and pop these coily ones up into the corner for later on. Now I found in my box that the Monstera leaf had a film on it and that's very common in, oh gosh, you know, a moment ago I knew what this material was called and now I've completely forgotten. My good friend Janine has a lot of jewellery made with this and um, it travels with a transit coating and that's to stop it getting scratched in transit. Now it's a slightly blue tone and I peeled mine off to reveal this silver underside. Astrid is in from Canada, welcome my darling. Jessica, there is on my personal YouTube channel, if you Google um, YouTube Gemhawks bookmark, it should come up. So you can have a look at that if you wish to. We're going to create this Monstera acrylic. Thank you, Patty. Do you know what? My brain just temporarily forgets the names of things that are actually quite important. And today it was acrylic. Yes, so acrylic often comes with a transit material on it. And it was blue on the silver side and a slightly paler color on the green side. So I just moved them away by just flicking up the corner and peeling them off. I prefer this colourway. If you wanted to, you can leave that transit film on. The English Riviera, United Kingdom, that's the south coast, right? Are you Devon or Dorset? Uh, Jessica says, thank you, thank you, Huggles. I'm subscribed, so I'll have a look. I hope that you enjoy it, my darling. I really enjoyed it. There's a bunch of different ideas on that video as well. So let us get a crack on with this. Let's have a look at materials. I chose to use one of these bead caps and a daisy spacer up at the top, one of these fluted bead caps, so doubling up on the drama, and then one of these fabulous stardust spacers. Now, in order to make the Monstera leaf sit exactly how I wanted to, I did something a little bit hardcore to this one. So they come with a bit of an angle in them and all I did was I increased that angle. Now this is very much for me. I do have strong fingers but not strong enough. It's a two-plier technique. 
both straight edged pliers. Am I hearing ocean surf lol? <laughs> I'm right slap bang in the middle of England. I'm so far from the ocean. You couldn't be further from the ocean in England if you tried. Mind you, it's still only about 75 or 80 miles. It's not that far. <laughs> I know that some of you guys are like 1500 miles from the ocean. So I'm going to grip the beautiful Stardust flat washer spacer. And I'm going to grip it on one side as close to that central little line as I possibly can. And then I'm just going to increase that angle. So what I'm going to do is just push those two sides together. And in that way, instead of having a gentle fold, it has a much stronger fold. Uh, Roseanne said, I actually liked the blue before my plier scratched it, revealing it was a film. The blue was pretty. The blue was pretty, but I love this green. Love the green. So I've set my green forwards in terms of how the ear wires are attached but you could use the silver side if you prefer so i'm going to give that another little squish to bring it closer together and close that angle up until it's a lot sharper so if i show you that sideways you'll see that that's a lot closer and that is going to help us set the monster relief exactly how we want it to now you remember we started with five or six inch scrap length we're still working with the residue Teresa says, all oh, less than 10 miles here in Tampa. Absolutely. Are you far from, is it Bush Gardens in Tampa? Didn't quite make it, ran out of time when I was in Florida about a million years ago when the dinosaurs roamed the planet. Let's move those out of the way. Hi everyone, says Debbie, just joining. I'm very late. You're very welcome anyway. Anne says, I'm two hours from the ocean. You're closer than I am, my love. So we're going to start with making one of those loops again and do you remember I said that there are two ways that you can make the loop? You can cut and estimate how much wire you'll need, or you can make the loop first. So in the first tutorial, when we made the parrot earrings, I made the loop first. This time I'm going to estimate and put an angle on. So that's probably, let me just grab a ruler. That's around about a quarter of an inch, just over a quarter of an inch maybe. Uh, 12 hours here, but going to tamper in a few weeks. Jessica says, I'm in Spring Hill. I'm not sure where about Spring Hill is, my lovely. Is that down, down in the south? I'm going to then, with my approximately quarter inch of wire past that bend, I'm going to turn that into a loop. So I tend to do that in a couple of motions, just twisting that around until I get the loop shape that I desire. So once I've got a loop, I'm going to just fine it up. In traffic, Bush Gardens is about 15 minutes. How wonderful. Jessica is also in Tampa Bay. That's wonderful. Do you guys ever hang out and bead together? I'd love to do that. I'd love to go on a little tour of the US and hang out in occasional places and just say, hey, come and bead party with me. So I'm just going to straighten up the straight end of that wire a little bit. And being very careful not to mark my wire, I'm simply opening and closing my pliers, my straight edged pliers, but rotating that wire around and that tends to give me a straight enough edge to achieve everything I want to achieve. So the first thing I'm going to do now is open up this loop so that I can add in that monster relief. Rebecca says, if I drive nine hours in, oh and the thing has disappeared. <sighs> I'm so sorry Rebecca. <laughs> Your comment has disappeared. I'll check it out later. Nine hours and you're still not at the ocean? That's centralised. Sabrina says hello to all and hello to Jen. Thank you. Dee says 23 hours from Tampa, but only an hour from Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. Oh my gosh, that would be so fun. Jessica, I would love to. That would be fabulous. So I am going to make sure that the cut end of my wire reaches back against that angle. And then I'm going to squish that loop to make it nice and hard set that wire i'm then going to open it up as if it was a jump ring so i'm grabbing the half with the open side and twisting that upwards so that we get that aperture and we can add in our leaf so i'm going to put the green forwards again and just pop that through now if you wanted to ring the changes you could loop it from the narrow end of the leaf if you particularly wanted to Jesse James B says, good afternoon. Marlene says, hello from Elliottsburg, Pennsylvania, outside of Harrisburg. Let's close that loop up. And PA I learning now is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I was reading the comment instead of looking at what I was doing. So I've closed that loop back up in exactly the same way. 
slightly harder to see when there's a connector or a charm on there. We just want to make sure that that is sitting really neatly. So do you remember how I squished the washer, the Stardust washer? What I'm going to do is add that on top of my Monstera leaf and sit it so that it sits over the top of that loop. So you, you do need to have a reasonably small loop. If you make the bend of wire around about a quarter of an inch, it should be just fine. You can make it slightly smaller if you wanted to. Uh, Sharon is 20 minutes from Niagara. Oh my gosh. 20 minutes from Lake Erie Beach. Fabulous. I'm quite, quite jealous, you know. So once we've sat, it's a bit like a saddle, actually. If you imagine, it's sitting the saddle, that Stardust saddle, over the top of the loop we've created. We're then going to add on, first of all, the fluted bead cap. And that's going to sit down over the top of that saddle. Just get that saddle to sit straight, add the next bead cap. Then I'm going to go for the open golden, or it's an antique golden toned bead cap. Dee says, I love Niagara Falls. That is absolutely wonderful. That's definitely one of the places I'd love to go to. To Tau says, where in Texas are you? I'm from Houston. Fabulous. Let us pop the last little daisy and bright golden uh, daisy spacer this time. And just sit that down to make sure that you're happy with how everything looks. Now what I might do is make that loop just a tiny bit smaller. But I'm not going to worry about that now. If you wanted the saddle to sit a little bit more closely over the top, as I have done in the examples, just a very, very slight adjustment, I'd make that loop a tiny bit smaller. Rebecca is in Austin. Jessica says, how was hanging with Sarah and the crown jewels? Oh my gosh, we got the chattiest yeoman of the guard ever. He was a delight and he gave us so much information about the Cullinan diamond, which was discovered in 1905 and... I don't believe has been equaled in terms of size and clarity. So I'm going to grip the wire just as it comes out of the top of my stack. So I've got a lovely stack of materials here and I do need to allow a tiny amount of space between that daisy spacer and where the pliers sit so that I can get a nice angle and I'm doing that opposite to the line of the Monstera leaf. Thoroughly recommend the Tower of London. We met a raven who was jolly good fun as well. What I'm going to do is make sure that that daisy spacer doesn't escape. So you can just grip that, or you can not worry about it and put it on later, whatever makes you happy. So here I'm going to estimate the distance I need to make a larger loop. So it will be just over a quarter of an inch this time, making sure that I've got the flush end cut neatly. And I'm going to draw that around to make a nice large loop up at the top there. So I can open that out if it goes slightly smaller than I wanted and just recite it until I'm delighted with how that looks. So there you have your captive Monstera leaf with the saddle of that sparkle and then a stack of golden bits and bobs just to make it like the most glamorous monstera leaf on the planet again you can open up or you can use whatever kind of earring finding you desire so there we are on earring number two already let's pop those out of the way now i'll bring them back in at the end of today's video and we can have a look at all three of them now this is the one that i use in a much larger size Without the large bead on the top, I tend to use scraps of chain or very small beads when I'm making bookmarks. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me just grab the postcard that comes with the February MMBB and just show you how it can act as a paperclip or as a bookmark. So you can allow that to sit out the top of the book. And what I would do is have a tiny loop up here and then a scrap of chain or something that was not going to damage a precious, precious book. But that's how they work. You don't have to do that. I just think they look lovely as earrings. So I'm moving on now to a new length of around about 10 inches. Now, I think 10 inches is probably more than we need. But with this design, it's really annoying to get part the way through and decide that actually you don't have quite enough wire. So I'm starting with 10 inches of that 18 gauge round wire. Again, I'm working with Softflex Craft wire in a non-tarnished copper 18 gauge round, but you can equally work with whatever color you desire, or you can work with the German style wire, which works 
for this project, for all of today's projects, in exactly the same way. So I'm going to grip hold of one end of that wire and just give that a warm through. This was cut a couple of days ago in preparation for this video, so I want to make sure that it's now nice and flexible and warm and ready to work neatly. So when you're making jewellery that is designed to be part of a pair, it pays you to take time to make sure that your central apertures are the same size. A way that you can do this is to use a tool such as the memory wire shaper tool. So you could use the smaller or the larger, whichever you want, to get that first circular shape and that will give you the same aperture every single time. In addition to that you could use your six step bail making pliers or you could pop a little mark with a permanent marker pen onto your pliers or if you're me you could be a rebel and just guess. So I'm going to just guess that this is going to match and I'm going to start by creating a round form with my wire and just before it starts to loop around I'm going to put the round nose pliers down and instead grab my flat pliers. Now my flat pliers are bent chain nose pliers. They really help me out, I love them, I've had them forever. What I'm going to do now is push the coil of wire into the forefinger on my non-dominant hand using very, very small rotations. If you've been watching with me for a little while here at Jesse James Beads or on my own channel, you'll know that the best piece of advice for making a coil neat and tidy and even is to go slowly. So I'm going to whiz around <laughs> three times from our start point which is where we're at right now. So I've got my start point of wire here, I've gone around once, twice and three times. And at this point, what I want to do is give it a quick squish to make sure that it's good and solid and I'm not going to accidentally undo it in any way. And I'm going to put a bit of extra heat just down in the next couple of inches of wire. If you're making matched earrings, you will want to pop one piece on top of the other to see at what point you need to make the first bend. So we're making the first inside bend. Let me raise this up, it'll go slightly blurry, but you'll be able to see the technique there with the light on it like so. We're matching at the moment here. So we will need to, you can either mark with a, a pen or you can estimate, or you can put your nail against the point at which that first angle change occurs. grip it with those pliers and create a change in direction. Bring it back up towards the coil up at the top. Let me just pop that out of the way. So you can see that we've got a nice angle. You can take a moment if you're making matched earrings to ensure that this is the right size, that that angle change takes place in the same space. If it's slightly too high or slightly too low, you are able to just very, very gently move that a tiny, tiny fraction just by opening and closing the pliers and drawing them down as you do so. The next thing that we want to do is to bring this long tail of wire all the way around the arc at the top. Now it is not impossible for people who are new to wire to achieve this. It just takes a little time and a little effort. So the first thing I want to do is to ensure that the wire that's coming away here, the length of wire, has tension against that coil. So in order to do that I'm going to push it so that it just slides for a second underneath that coil and then I'm going to very gently pull that out just a little bit and in that way you'll get it to line up against the edge of the coil that you made. Trying to do that without taking the wire past the coil and then drawing it back, it's possible, it's just annoying. So why don't we do this the gem way which is always going to be the slightly easier way. So for the next section we need to trace this tail of wire, the long tail of wire, all the way around the entire form. So in order to preserve the shape that you've created so far, what I will do is grip that very, very firmly without bringing it into the box joint. If you bring it into the box joint of your pliers, you may end up with a little scar on your wire that you don't want. So I'm going to gently push the central coil onto the free long tail of wire very very small amount by small amount and I'm putting an awful lot of pressure through my dominant hand to hold this flat 
The reason I'm doing that is because it will enable the section of wire that's going around the central coil to sit beside it really neatly and firmly and you'll end up with a much neater result. So when you start to come back down here, just push the wire in so that it sits against and then push it slightly underneath so that it gets nice and tight and tense. You can see that's just passing underneath the frame there and then draw it back out a tiny, tiny amount. And in that way, you'll trace a really good line around the first point on the frame. It looks a bit like an ice cream corner at the moment. So the next thing I'm going to do is just warm the next couple of inches of wire like so. And then I'm going to create a bend back on itself, but I'm going to use the tip of my pliers to help me get a little bit of space just underneath the first inside tip push the wire and going slowly and gently in small movements will always be the winning way. So you can see there's quite a gap but it means that you're tracing the shape neatly. So again a little bit of warmth into the tail of wire, a little bit of warmth into the tail of wire, grip very firmly as you start bringing that long tail of free wire over the top, over the top and I'm going to take it just past that central point so if I just hold that free for a second, you can see we've got a triple spiral in the centre. We've come down to a point, back up, traced around the spiral, back down to a second point, back up again and traced over the top of that spiral. And this is the point at which we're going to bring the tail of wire away at a right angle. And the place that the wire will leave, if you imagine that there is a straight line running between the points at the base of the design, up through the very centre of the hole. I'm going to grip that tail of wire and just pull that away whilst gripping very firmly with my non-dominant hand. Now if you struggle with that you can grip with an extra pair of pliers making sure that all of those wires are flat and two-dimensional so that you're not causing any stresses on the wire and you can just get a nice straight angle coming away up at the top. So that's the nuts and bolts of it. If, like me, you've gone a little bit too far over the top, can you see that it's ever so slightly to the left of that central aperture? I'm going to show you how to fix that. I'm just going to pop my pliers back in and I'm going to pop the pliers onto that angle and squish and twist very, very slowly. You can do this maybe one time and it's just reset that line so it's nice and central. The next thing we're going to do is add on our beads of choice. So I have gone for these fabulous, I can't tell if they're ceramic or glass. They're cold to the touch, but they're really, really pretty. It is very much like alcohol bubbles uh, when you do sort of painting. Really, really beautiful, beautiful beads from that February Pirate Getaway MMBB. I'm finishing off again with one of the antique gold colourway bead caps. I'm just going to slide that down onto the top and then for this design I thought in case you've never seen one before we will do actually no I haven't done a wrapped loop at the top I've done a simple loop but if you want to see a wrapped loop if I was doing this as a pendant I might go for a wrapped loop instead I'll show you a quick wrapped loop on this one and I'll put this as a pendant later so for earrings I've gone for a simple loop quite a small one what I'm going to do now is show you an alternative to that. So I showed you earlier, let me just grab the pirate, pirate parrot. He had a simple loop up at the top there. So you can simply take this design, pop a simple loop up on the top there, exactly as we did for the parrot. I'm going to show you a wrapped loop. So I'm using my pliers and I'm going to pop a forwards bend on that wire because I'm turning it into a pendant instead of earrings. So that comes forwards. And I'm then going to grab my bail makers to make a large circular form up at the top. If this moves around for the moment, don't worry about it. We will sort it in just a moment. So in order for this to be worn as a pendant, I want a reasonably large bail. So I think I might go for number five. Just rotate that around halfway and I've got the first half of my loop. Pop that back onto number five and then draw that tail of wire all the way around. Now if I remove the pliers, you'll see that we've got an oversized large form up at the top there. Now we want to keep that nice and circular. It looks attractive. 
and then I'm going to bring that tail now all the way around the core wire. Now if you can put a little bit of pressure upwards towards the bale and it should in theory keep your wraps a little bit neater. So I'm moving it around in a circle around that core wire that goes up through the bead and up to that round shape at the top. But what I'm trying to do as well is put a little bit of northern tension in it which sounds like a scar band from 1980 push that all the way through and what we're going to do is trim away now. So when you trim away always look twice at the wire you're cutting to make sure that it is the correct wire. There's nothing quite so sad as losing a project at the last minute and then I'm going to make sure that that cut end sits down flat against that core. So I'm going to give that a gentle squish. We're protecting our lovely ceramic or glass bead, I don't know what it is, um, with that bead cap. So that really helps to keep it nice and safe. And then we'll pop that down as a pendant to go with our earrings. One of the things I like to do when I'm making pendants to go with a matched suite is I will quite often make a larger feature of the pendant. These are all pretty much the same, aside from we've got a wrapped loop here and we've, it's quite a large one so you can wear it on a necklace chain or something similar but it's fun to play around with designs like that let's just bring all of our projects back in before I love you and leave you so we've got our pendant and earrings just here they are so much fun like I said earlier on there is a tutorial about how you can turn those into bookmarks then I'm going to show you the Monstera with that little saddle and I might actually make the single monstera into a pendant on a length of chain because I've already put a loop up at the top just because you put a bit of a loop doesn't mean that you can't adapt it as you go so you could add that onto a length of the pirate getaway beautiful happy skull chain and then pop a loop on the other end of the chain that's large enough to use as a bale for a, a pendant rather. So let's just bring those beautiful pirates parrots in. There we go my lovelies. I hope that you've enjoyed that trio of earrings here and this box that we're working with today was the February MMBB from Jesse James which is the magical mystery bead box for pirate getaway. I'm just going to give you a quick flash of the, all of the beads that I still have to play with and if you're not quite ready to do a subscription maybe go for a single box the inspiration that you get by having a beautifully curated collection of beads is fabulous i really enjoy the inspo with the colorways as well so it's me i'm still here you're still blessed with my company i'm afraid i'm going to love you and leave you for today it's getting dark out here not not terribly pleasant weather today but I hope that you have had a beautiful time thank you so very much for joining me here at Jesse James Beads my name is Jem and I will be back here for a live on Facebook in two weeks which will be the something or another of an April that's two weeks from now <laughs> you guys have the most lovely day and I look forward to catching up with you very very soon thanks for your company bye for now